Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about one-sided limits. So what does that mean for something to be one-sided? What does that mean? Well, let's talk about a limit in general. Remember that from the previous video, a limit is just a way of describing what happens when a function, <coughs> excuse me, when a function gets close to a certain value. So for example, if I have a graph, and this is the graph of y equals x squared, the limit as x approaches 0, so as I get really, really close to 0, so from here, for example, so as I get really, really close to 0, it's equal to 0. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, I'm approaching 0 from which side, and that's kind of the point of this video. So in this video, we're going to talk about what happens when we think about a sense of direction. So what does that mean? So what I'm saying here is, suppose I have the graph of y equals x squared. So once again, now for a limit, it matters how you approach, in this case, zero. So for example, if I want to find the limit as x approaches zero of x squared, well, I have to make sure that the limit from both sides is equal to zero. So for example, if I approach zero from the left side, I should get zero. And if I approach zero from the right side, I should also get zero. In this case, that happens to be true. So in this situation, yeah, the limit is zero. So that's what I mean by one-sided limits. So one-sided limits are just a way of saying what happens when I approach limits from different kind of directions. And for a limit to exist, the limit from the left has to equal the limit from the right. So in other words, let's just do this with an example. So here's a little graph here. And then we're gonna do a plot. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this plot right here, this is called the the heavy side function, or sometimes called switch functions for those of you in electrical engineering. So the heavy side function kind of looks like this. It's a piecewise function, so we can split it up. So it's equal to zero when x is less than or equal to zero, and it's equal to one when x is bigger than one. So in other words, we can write like this. So the heavy side function is usually denoted by the letter h of t. And this is equal to zero when t is less than zero. And this is equal to one when t is bigger than or equal to zero. Notice the subtleties here. Less than zero, there's an open dot right there. Greater than or equal to zero, there's a closed dot right there. So there's a bit of a subtlety there. Okay, what about the limit? What happens at zero? So what happens when I take the limit as x, or not x, but in this case, I would use t. So let me just write that down. So this would be h of t. And this right here, that would be equal to t. So what happens when I take the limit as t approaches zero of h of t? Well, this one is a bit of a trickier situation to kind of explain. This one was a little bit easier because I could just take the limit from left and right, and I'll get the, I would I would read zero both times. But here it's not quite that simple. Here we have to analyze what happens. So to do so to analyze limits from different directions, we usually denote that with a plus or minus sign in a specific way. So what do I, what do I mean by that? We usually denote limits like this. So for example, if I want to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, or in this case t, sorry, when t approaches 0 from the left, we usually put a little minus sign there. So this indicates that I'm taking the limit, the limit as t approaches 0 from the left direction. So I'm going this way. So, so h of t. So in this situation, the limit is equal to 0. Because as I approach it from the left, so if I kind of, you know, if I'm standing right here, and I'm facing this way, well, this side would be my left direction, and this side would be my right direction. So that's what I kind of mean by left and right. Okay, so if I approach the limit from the left, well, I'm going to get zero, which is kind of obvious. It's going to reach zero. So as I get really, really close to zero, I'm going to get closer and closer to zero. Okay, okay, what about the limit from the right, though? This one is a bit more interesting. So if I take the limit from the right of h of t, well, in this situation, if I approach the limit from the right, I'm actually going to reach 1. So this value right there, that's 1, and that's 0, just for your reference. Uh, yeah, okay. So if I approach the limit from the right, I'm going to get really close to 1, not 0. Hmm, that's interesting. But hey, hold on. I have two different values of a limit from different directions. 
what happens then? Well, that just means that the limit at zero doesn't actually exist. So the limit at as t approaches zero, so not from redirection, but just zero in general, of each of the each of t. Well, that doesn't exist. Does not exist. And for short form, we usually just write that as dne. So the limit here is non-existent. It just doesn't exist. And that happens several times. Let's do another example. So example two. So suppose I want to take the limit as x approaches zero of the absolute value of x over x. Okay, this one is a little bit more interesting. So the problem is that the absolute value of, if I just plug in zero, well, we have a problem. We can't really do anything about that. But what we could do is you could try to simplify it, but simplifying it is not that simple either. So we might want to analyze what uh, what happens at this limit when it approaches from left and right. The reason this isn't so simple to analyze is because we have this absolute value. We can't just divide right away, but we can kind of break this up into two parts because we know for a fact, for example, that the absolute value of x by definition is equal to x when x is bigger than or equal to zero. And we know it's equal to minus x when x is less than zero. So we can kind of analyze what happens when x is less than zero and when x is bigger than or equal to zero. But once again, this is a double-sided limit. So as a result, we can check the limit as x approaches zero from the right of this function. So as it approaches from the as it approaches zero from the right, well, we're going to get the absolute value of x is just going to become a positive. And that is still going to be an x. Well, x over x is just equal to 1. So we get the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1. And that's, of course, equal to 1. So nothing too mind-boggling there. OK, what happens from the left, though? So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, well, in this situation, this absolute value right here is going to become a negative. So we're going to get negative x over x. Well, this simplifies, so we get the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of negative 1, which of course is equal to negative 1. But the problem is that the two limits from both of the directions are not the same. So as a result, well, the limit just doesn't exist. So this limit in this situation, so the limit as x approaches 0 in general of this function, this is DNE. It does it doesn't exist. So that's kind of my the point of why direction is really important. The, for a limit to exist, it has to be the same from both sides, and that's really really important. If it's not the same, the limit is just not going to exist. So let's do a kind of a graphical example of this just to kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so let's draw an axis, and I'm going to use white to do this one. Uh, so let's get an axis. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to make a really quick axis. Actually, I'm going to make this a bit better, bigger on that note, just so we have a more room. And that's better. Okay. So let's go ahead and plot this. So let's see. Uh, let's go all the way to seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And sure, let's put seven. Uh, okay. That's good. Let's see, and then for the y-axis, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is the y-axis, and this is here is the x-axis. Okay, so not too bad. Okay, so now let's go and draw an arrow, so just, just to indicate this goes on forever. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and draw a few things. So here, we're going to go ahead and draw this kind of graph. So this is going to go all the way to 2. So that's 1, 2, uh, let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, let's see, let's just clear it up, 6 and 7. OK, so in this situation, let's see, uh, 5 is going to be here. Uh, roughly here, and 2 is going to be here, and it's going to go all the way up like so, 
and it's going to come down like so. Mm, yeah. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a few questions. So the first one, okay, so I'm just going to write down a few things. So E, B, C, D, E, and F. So we're going to go ahead and find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x. The limit, so this graph right there, this, this graph is y equals g of x. Okay. So the second one, we're going to take the limit. Actually, I'm just going to space these out a little bit so they look a bit neater. So the first graph, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x. Part B, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. Part C, the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. Part D, the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of g of x. Part E, the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of g of x. And finally, let's see, part F, the limit as x approaches 5 of g of x. Okay, so let's just zoom out a little bit. Uh, scroll up a little bit and let's answer these questions. Okay, so part A. So I'm going to use a different color for this. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Okay, well, if you kind of look at this graph from the left, so again, that's from this direction and going this way. So from the left, well, if I go all the way to 2, we reach this point right there. Well, the value right there is equal to 3. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x in this situation is equal to 3. Okay, now it's not too crazy, so let me just put all of this in red. Okay, next one. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. Okay, so 2 from the right. Well, if I go from the right, well, I'm going to go here, here, and then here. Well, okay, but that value right there is equal to 1. So that's that doesn't work. So, sorry, let me let me let me correct that. I was jumping in the gun. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the x approaches 2 from the right in this situation is equal to 1. Okay. Now, this time we have to see the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. Well, the problem is here these two limits are not equal to each other. So the limit does not exist. Okay. Now, part D. The limit as x approaches 5 from the left. Okay, from the left, well, I'm going to go this way, then go on, and then I'm going to arrive at this point right there. you got to be careful. It's not this point. It's this point. Because remember, for a limit, we only care about what happens when we get really close to the value. And as we get close to the value, we reach this point, not this point. So as a result, the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of g of x, in this situation, is actually equal to 2. Okay, so the next one, the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of g of x. Okay, so once again, I approach it from the right this time. So I go from the right and I end up right there. So once again, I have to check what happens. I have to check what happens when I get really close to the value. So as I approach 5, I get really close to this point right there. So as a result, this limit is equal to 2 as well as a result. Okay. So, and the last one, the limit as x approaches 5 in general of g of x, well, this one is equal to 2. And the reason for that is because these two limits from both directions are exactly the same. So as a result, well, the limit is equal to 2, and it does exist. So that's it. That's all there is to the definition of what a one-sided limit is. You just have to make sure we check the limit from both directions, and that's it.
there's absolutely nothing too special about this and hopefully this video helped you if this video did help you please remember to like comment and subscribe and sh and spread this video around it would really help you out a lot and i just really appreciate it so that's all for this video and in the next video we will be talking about infinite limits and asymptotes and what they exactly are using the idea of a limit and that's it i will see you in the next video